Hello, this is Ron Henderson, President of Multi Real Estate Services. Today's question Is the San Fernando Valley or Los Angeles real estate market truly stabilizing? You hear plenty from the media and politicians that things have turned, but the bottom line is your perception may be skewed depending on if you're only leaning on the information you're being fed. I'm going to show you a lot of information in a short amount of time. Just keep your mind open. My interpretation of the data may be different than what you've been hearing. Let's keep in mind the fundamental economic rule of supply and demand. The first information we're going to go over will support the position that our local real estate market is stabilized. This chart reflects the quantity of residential sales are in line with last year's and above 2008. Here we see that inventory is bumping up from January, but substantially lower than 08 and still lower than 09. If we take a little different look at the Los Angeles inventory going back 20 plus years, you can see the peak of the inventory during the recession in the 1990s at 28 months. The next largest peak was in the end of 2007 at 18 months when this current real estate malfunction started. We bumped down to four months of inventory in mid-2009 and now we recently bumped up marginally to six months. So far it all sounds good. You'd think the issues we have now are less severe than they were back in the 90s. Uh, let's just keep these inventory levels and time frames in mind. This 20-year graph of Los Angeles real estate pricing shows that the old supply and demand is working and the pricing has stabilized after 50% drop from the peak. Now that's wonderful, right? The pain's finally over. At least that's what you're hearing from the media. Now here's the rest of the picture. Unemployment in LA County is over 13%. At least that's the official number the government's going by. Realistically, it's higher, but let's use that for now for comparison purposes. It's higher than the recession in the 90s, and so far it's not backing off. In fact, the city and state's financial issues will probably help add to that rate. Now here's a chart that tells a story. If we look at the last 30 years of California foreclosure and loan delinquency rates, it's obvious we have a situation today that eclipses all the prior real estate problems by a huge amount. We're running at least an 11% loan delinquency level and over 6% foreclosures. Do you remember that unemployment level? That's high and it's still going up. Loan delinquencies lag unemployment. So expect more loan delinquencies just from that one factor alone. Loan delinquencies and foreclosures are not isolated to specific areas. This is an area of West Hills, western of the San Fernando Valley, that is eclectic as it has single-family dwellings that range from 400 k to a million dollars. This diagram only shows you the last three months of the actual foreclosure activity. It's not even showing you the properties that have loans that haven't been paid for months that doesn't have a notice of default against it. Same here. This area of Studio City and Valley Village has a full price range of housing, but foreclosure activities ramp rampart through the entire area. Remember how nasty the inventory of the 1990s was compared to today? Well, there's millions of properties out there that have been or will be foreclosed upon, and that shadow inventory, even though we don't see it today, will have to be dealt with eventually. Let's summarize this information and put it in perspective. Foreclosures lag unemployment. We've already gone over that. Government required foreclosure moratoriums and loan modifications have been totally unsuccessful and have only temporarily slowed the rate of foreclosures. Politically, it may have sounded like a good idea, but in reality, it's lengthening and deepening the real estate recession. The extended government tax credits for buyers will be expiring on April 30th. The Fed's program purchasing $1.3 trillion of mortgage-backed securities was already completed. So now we've seen the lowest mortgage rates, and there's a lot of buyer activity that's already been front-loaded. Loan defaults are at record numbers and still building. Many foreclosures have been held off by institutions and foreclosed properties are not being liquidated. A lot of this is because the change in the mark-to-market -market accounting and institutions don't want to take a hit on their books because once they take the actual loss, it's going to have to be realized. Also, home equity lines, intermediate arms, the 5, 7, 10 year stuff, option arms will become major issues as interest rates go up and as interest-only loans become amortized. There's a lot of people hanging in there making payments with temporarily low interest rates that once the higher payments hit, all bets are off. The real estate market is many years before there's going to be true stabilization. We can see one, maybe even two full economic cycles pass before it resembles anything normal. What I've been telling my clients is cash purchases, they can wait. If you're considering buying if you need a loan, you may want to jump on something as long as the numbers crunch. You'll never see these kind of interest rates again and expect to hold on to the property for a while. Uh, as far as investment properties, you know, as long as the numbers make sense and be smart, be conservative. Also, stay away from homeowner associations. 
that's going to be a whole nother can of worms. Anyway, till next time, this is Ron Henderson signing off.